confined indoors during the winter months. The chief Boggin and his 11 men, one of whom is elected as the fool, and the Lord of the Hood with his wand of office, preside over this elaborate tradition. At three o'clock in the afternoon, the Boggins approach this stone. Then on cue, the fool escapes from the group, is chased and captured and manhandled to the stone. Remember, this is a sway on. The fool is presented with the hood, a leather covered length of rope, and he begins a speech while his fellow boggins try to smoke him out which is possibly all that's left of an earlier ritual sacrifice. This is a tradition that has absorbed a good many different elements over the years, including a folk history about how it all began in the 13th century. You can think what you like about the story. Could be superstition or anything. But it is supposed to be Lady Moby lost a cap. The workmen squabbled over it. The biggest and strongest man got it, but was too afraid to give it back to Lady Moby, so she called him a fool. The man who gave it back to Lady Mowbray was called the Lord. That's where we get the titles from. And from that day on to this, we've played a game every January the 6th to commemorate Axie Hood. Lady Mowbray's hood, which has now become the leather tube, is eventually thrown up to start the game. Oh, this is a swild! Right? No. It's all to get up! It's all against two! It's the Mesa man! Knock him down! Knock him down! Oh, don't him! Boggins guard the hood at the center of this heaving mass of men. It's a kind of giant rugby scrum called the sway. And the object of the game is to push the hood in the heart of the sway into one of two local pubs two miles apart. It's a ritual fight then between the villages of Haxey and Westwoodside. This can go on for two hours or more. But uh, <laughs> I think the way it's going, it'll be a quick one tonight. It'll be down in Haxey because Westwood haven't got the initiative and got it over that brow. If they'd got it over that brow, it could have been Westwood or Park Drain, but uh, I think it's coming actually. way. In time, the sway assumes a life of its own, a many-footed creature, an unpredictable beast trying to push the hood into one or other of the pubs. Nothing stands in the way of the sway. 
In its time, it has turned over cars, swept over private gardens, and demolished walls. It's licensed anarchy, fueled by beer. The rule is the landlord must have his feet inside the public house and reach out and touch that one. Once he's touched it, it's dead and it goes in. now to keep up this this game because we're proud of it we think it's a unique occasion and so we want to keep it going it, it, it's hacks it's part of us and, and, it, and i think we need it we need it yeah because i think it's a tradition that we, we've got to protect because there aren't that many of them about even when i was at school the masters didn't want it to go off Trying to stamp out a tradition would seem to guarantee its survival. But survival also depends upon the wholehearted participation of the community in that tradition. The men of Hallerton in Leicestershire have their annual ritual too. <coughs> the hair pie scramble and bottle kicking tradition each Easter. Handing out the hair pie is less of a scramble than it used to be. Who wants a piece of hair pie? Yeah. Now the vicar wields the knife, a case of the church joining up with an ancient fertility ritual when it couldn't beat it down. Cheers. The hair was once a symbol of the goddess of spring. Who's going to win? I'll let you! Who's going to win? In 1776, the local parson thought the tradition so violently heathen that he attempted to stop it, only to wake up one morning with the slogan, No Pie, No Parson, daubed all over the walls of his rectory, and plenty of work for the local glazier. Jesus Christ is coming out of retirement. <laughs> Just gives me a room, man. Right. Follow on. Get out with your camera a bit, man. Quick, while it goes out of your time. Kicking is another kind of primitive football. The ball, or bottle, is a keg filled with ale. And to score, a mass of villagers, or a handful of hard runners, must move it by any means they can to one of the goals in the opposing villages of Hallerton or Medbourne. It's a free-for-all for, for everyone, with no rules, no referees, no time limits, and no defined pitch. What's it like in there? Very rough, very. <laughs> Believe me, it's very rough. It's a good tradition, I mean, everybody gets together, it's a good old laugh, I mean. It's fun, yeah, but it's rough. As long as we're not the ones that go hospital, we're all right. <laughs> 